Hello, everybody. Wanted to take an opportunity today to show you my Father's Day gets. I got a new display case, this black one here, and a card which I'll show you in a minute. I now have two display cases like this. They don't match exactly different colors, but next year, now that I'm finally good at asking for things for myself after 25 years of being a father, I'm gonna ask for another black one. So this wall will have two black cases and I'll move this oak colored one somewhere else. But this is what we got for now. And I'm really excited about it. I can sort of display more. I kind of have some themes going here. Um, top row is modern on this one here, modern. And then I have some stadium clubs and then other Hall of Fame autographs. Down below I have a little Mariners run right here. Mariners Hall of Famers. More Hall of Fame autographs on the bottom here. And then up here, this is a Brooks Robinson row. Most of them are stadium club, except that one, wait, that'd be that end. That one and the index card. The next row up is our action pack, um, Hall of Famers that we that I've shown recently. And then just other vintage cards I like. Then I did a Harvey Haddix thing. Then this originally I was going to do a whole row of like pioneers or important figures in baseball. So put my Jackie in there and I put my Mini Minoso rookie in there. And there's still a lot of people I need. I don't have like a really cool Larry Doby card. I would love to get the 75 Frank Robinson Indians team card with him in the bottom. But I did go out and get one thing with my gift card that I got for Father's Day. That's going to go perfectly. That's why there's a little blank space right there for my Trailblazers Pioneers row or parcel row or whatever I'm going to call it. This is a 1958 Topps Kurt Flood. My daughter got me a $30 gift card and I rolled about another $10 of my own funds into getting this beautiful Kurt Flood in a PSA 4. And most important to me on a card like this was the great color is the surface. And the surface is darn near perfect. There's a tiny fisheye right there. But other than that, it's a strong card if I was worried about other things. Uh, I think I would still be pretty happy with it. And, of course, not only was Kurt Flood a great ball player, had three pennants with the Cardinals, two World Series, multiple All-Stars, gold gloves. For you younger people that may not know, Kurt Flood's very important in the history of the sport because he challenged the reserve clause. So prior to the reserve clause being overturned in the mid-'70s, Teams basically owned players. Even if they weren't under contract, they still had the rights to those players and could do essentially whatever they wanted with them. And after the 1969 season, Kurt Flood was traded from the Cardinals to Philadelphia. And he said, no thanks, I don't want to go. And he didn't really have a choice other than to retire. So he wrote a letter to the commissioner. Mr. Kuhn, after 12 years in the major leagues, I do not feel that I am a piece of property to be bought and sold irrespective of my wishes. I believe that any system which produces that result violates my basic rights as a citizen and is inconsistent with the laws of the United States. It is my desire to play baseball in 1970, and I am capable of playing. I received a contract from the Philadelphia club, but I believe I have the right to consider offers from other clubs before making any decisions. I therefore request that you make known to all major league clubs my feelings in this matter and advise them of my availability for the 1970 season. Sincerely, Kurt Flood. And he received very heavy criticism and a lot of support. Went to the Supreme Court, uh, failed at the Supreme Court narrowly. Uh, they were citing precedent at that time, previous rulings challenging the uh, reserve clause. And it took another about five years before they could build in free agency into the CBA. And that's when you have 
the birth of free agency sort of as we know it today. So Kurt Flood, very important figure, sacrificed the last part of his career. He was still in his early 30s uh, when he was forced to retire, basically, rather than play where he didn't want to play. And I hope one day, so Marvin Miller, a lot of you know, is was the head of the Players Union at the time, or the lawyer, and he recently got in the Hall of Fame. And my hope is that they can find a way to get Kurt Flood in the Hall of Fame someday. His playing career doesn't quite warrant it, although he's a very good player. The numbers just aren't there. But I hope there's some kind of um, uh, extra credit given for what he did for the players of the sport. And they can roll that into sort of like they did with Buck O'Neill. You know, just his playing numbers didn't warrant his induction. But because he was such a great ambassador, you know, you sort of combine those things. And, you know, you get at the right committee, the right errors committee. Hopefully one day Mr. Flood will be in the Hall of Fame. I would support it. I mean, Marvin Miller got in. So hopefully it's a matter of time. But even if he never gets in, I'm really happy with this card. It goes, it's going to go beautifully in that row of my Trailblazers, Pioneers, whatever you want to call them. Probably not Pioneers, but Trailblazers, let's call it. So we got Jackie, we got Minoso, Kurt Flood. I'm thinking I need a Larry Doby. I need that 75 Indians uh, Frank Robinson team card. What else? Who else do I need in this row? Help me out here. And what do you think of my cases? Ooh, and my cards. Very nice. Very happy with this. And happy you spent some time with me here. Until next time, remember, we don't count subscribers. We count friends.